volcanic and uh, tectonic uh, landscapes and uh, geomorphic features landforms that are associated with uh, tectonics let's go to the next slide so you guys know that uh, all the tectonic uh, features that uh, that are present on earth Ranges and uh, different gold and thrust belts. And you guys uh, remember uh, from the start class that we discussed about the endogenetic and exogenetic uh, processes. And uh, some of these processes, as you guys remember, are related to the internal heat or uh, the processes that are going in inside the earth and they govern the, the shape and uh, morphology of the planet and there are many processes uh, especially the processes of earthquake especially the processes of faulting folding and so and so on but these processes are in one way or the other are responsible for the shape of uh, and uh, landscape of the planet let's see who is the All right, uh, so you can see here uh, that there is a vertical strata present in an area. As we know, normally the sedimentary rocks are deposited in horizontal layers. So if you see vertical, it means uh, if it is a sedimentary rock that there were there have been forces that made this uh, look like this. Huh? Similarly, you see a rock that is present over and, uh, is uh, taking a shape outside the earth and uh, it's like having some elevation or you need uh, great forces to move uh, this from the deep underneath to the surface then we have uh, shape maybe related to the volcanic uh, area we have the presence of volcanoes and then we have some track for running that has been disturbed by an earthquake or uh, some strong motion there are other features as well you can see that uh, we have uh, some crater lake or and then we have some fissure eruption uh, along the line and uh, you can see that there are smokes rising from the deep in it because of the high temperature then we have the uh, fissure and you can see that a person is standing you can see the scale that uh, sometime Earthquakes are related with the fissures and uh, maybe you have seen in the news that uh, there has been some uh, houses or some uh, animals falling in between and uh, that creating a new sometime. Then we have the vertical slopes or vertical cliffs that are also result of these tectonic forces. So you can see a series of uh, uh, landforms and a series of uh, different features so, yesterday we just discussed about the volcanism and uh, volcanic landscape as you guys remember uh, we have uh, uh, at the plate margins or um, uh, as you guys remember we saw the uh, map let us see okay oh uh, here we have uh, a mid oceanic ridge uh, that you guys remember we discussed in the class and uh, here we have the other tectonic boundary that indicates the presence of um, colliding plates and here the plates are separating from each other. Uh, here we have the uh, creation of large quantities of magma that ultimately, uh, large quantities of lava that ultimately uh, makes its way to the surface. Okay. And then we have uh, uh, two types of uh, igneous rocks. One is the uh, intrusive and the other one is extrusive igneous rock. Okay. And then we have the uh, volcanic cones that are present uh, on the lava plateau. And then there are minor features, minor forms like geysers, hot springs, boiling mud that we discussed uh, when we were deciding the groundwater. 
Inclusive landforms, uh, we have batholiths, lacoliths, dikes, and sills based on their sizes and their geometry. We classify the intrusive landforms into this. Then we have case studies are uh, knitted, and uh, you can see these uh, features whenever you uh, go to a landscape that has ig igneous activity and the landscape or the landforms that are a result of the igneous activity are very uh, particular type of landforms and can be differentiated from other forms because of their geometry, location and size. So we studied uh, some of these uh, volcano types uh, yesterday and uh, you can see that some of they have very gentle uh, slopes and they have fissure eruption and then we have a little bit of uh, gentle slope and then we have the steep slopes here and then we have the uh, again a cinder cone type of volcano with uh, one uh, vent and then we have uh, a composite uh, type of volcano with uh, other vents and then we have the caldera volcano that has mostly collapse and uh, can result in the formation of a caldera lake. Let's go to the next. Okay, so you guys remember, uh, we discussed about the uh, fissure eruption, uh, mostly. All right, I think there was some connection problem from my side. Maybe that's why you guys didn't. Uh, okay, so we have the uh, fissure eruption uh, in the mid oceanic ridges and uh, you have the creation of sea floor that is continuously creating at the center of the center of these uh, fissures okay and then we have the creation of sea floor as a result of the fissure eruption Okay, we have uh, uh, hot spots and you can see that the uh, plate is moving in this direction and as a result of that we have the continuous ejection of uh, <coughs> hot magma deep beneath the surface and as a result of that uh, it keeps on uh, the upper part of it keeps on moving in this direction and as a result of that it's just like you have a lamp and then you move the paper on it so it will just give birth to new uh, volcanic islands and uh, the example of it is again the Hawaiian type of volcanoes and Hawaiian islands. They can also result in the typical type of landforms and uh, uh, landscapes. So extrusion is uh, the movement of uh, hot magma that goes to the surface in the form of uh, lava, hot lava. There it uh, gets cooled and uh, hardened. Then we have the intrusive landforms. Uh, we have the magma that uh, solidifies under the surface and then it uh, reaches to the surface due to erosion and weathering. And uh, as a result of that, these uh, uh, landforms are exposed to the surface. You can see here, we have uh, a volcanic uh, cone and then we have the pluton and then we have the uh, vertical vent that is moving there we have the sills and we have the uh, some of these are the dikes and the smaller sizes that uh, solidify underneath we call it as lacolith and if the whole magma chamber is solidified we can call it as a batholith because it ranges in size in kilometers and uh, they can be exposed uh, due to weathering so what happens normally the upper part of it is removed due to erosion and weathering and then the main granitic pluton or the batholith is exposed to the surface. Okay. So stock is also an inclusive body but it is smaller than 100 scale kilometers and uh, then comes the lacolith. Lacolith is normally a, an igneous rock that has a dome shaped or mushroom shaped inclusion. Similarly we have uh, plutons and uh, plutons are actually any any rock that uh, solidifies under the surface of earth we call it as uh, pluton its name is taken from a greek god pluto okay 
then we have the dike as you guys remember from the days of your glossary that uh, any uh, rock that is cutting the already existing rocks at an angle we call it as a dike so dike cuts across the layers of existing rock when exposed on the earth surface dikes appear to be a wall of volcanic rock so maybe the first uh, picture that we saw today may be because of a volcanic Oh, you can see here beautiful examples of dikes uh, that was a vertical that uh, that is the orientation of strata but you see there is one feature that is cutting all the orientation and it is present and uh, that's why we call it as a dike or discordant structure here we have uh, another example of uh, dike as well then we have uh, sills that are uh, long and uh, thin intrusions that are almost horizontal and uh, they don't have any angle and uh, they are uh, uh, same layer as other sedimentary rocks then we have uh, veins we have uh, veins that are present and uh, you can see that these are smaller uh, scale fracture fillings we call them as veins so when the uh, fluid in the uh, fractures it cools down it changes into form of a vein so we have uh, uh, a lot of these structures that are present uh, as a result of uh, combination of tectonic forces and as a result of erosion and weathering so you can see that these landforms are a result of two processes the exogenic and the endogenic endogenic being the tectonic forces and exogenic being the weathering and erosion so we also use another term we call it as mono nocs and uh, these are the uh, features that are result when we have a a batholith uh, that is present uh, uh, in a planar area where we have uh, no other mountains and uh, we have a resisting rock that appears we call it as mono nocs so oh, we have uh, tectonic uh, landscapes that can be created by earthquakes we have uh, faulting and uh, we have uh, rift valleys ground displacement and fault so we will try to see these uh, uh, features of uh, the world of earthquakes uh, tomorrow and uh, for for today we just discuss the some of the volcanic landscapes uh, in a little bit of more detail and also the uh, landscapes that are associated with intrusive igneous Thank you.